Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the next video in the additional skill RPA developer series and the topic which we have chosen is the databases. Prior to this video in the series, we have already covered all of these videos which you are seeing on the screen. How you can install the SQL Server, what are the basics of databases, how you can create, update, retrieve, delete, what are the clauses, comments, operators, all of that we have already discussed. In case you are absolute new and you have no idea and you don't have a database as well, you can simply follow this playlist and get along. Now in this playlist, we are covering something which is called the constraints. Now when I talk about constraint, there are various constraints available. We have already covered the primary key constraint and the foreign key constraint. And today we are going to see a new constraint which is called the unique key constraint. The link to all the videos and the playlist is available in the description. Talking of the agenda, we are going to start with what exactly are constraint. That would be a short intro of constraints. We are going to have a quick recap of primary versus foreign key because that is what we require for today. Today we are going to see what exactly is unique key constraint, how do you use it, how does it differ from primary key, how do you add unique key constraint to existing table and lastly what are the benefits. And most of this we are going to see with a step by step demonstration in the SQL Server. Okay, so to get started with what exactly are constraint, we have already seen in the previous video but just a quick recap. Constraints are the rules and conditions that are defined on the table to enforce the data integrity and ensure that the data meets the certain criteria. In other words, in case I am creating a table and I want my data to follow certain rules, certain regulations, I want the data to be accurate, consistent and reliable, I use something which is called database constraints. When we talk about the constraints, we have different type of constraints which are available. The common ones are listed here. Primary, foreign, unique, check, default and not null. Right. Talking about the primary key, this has been already defined. So just a quick recap. Whenever we want to make sure that my table has a unique identifier, which means that I do not want duplicate records in my table. I simply use a constraint which is called a primary key. Right. To create a primary key, you simply have to create a table and whichever column you want to have the primary key, you have to just mention here primary key like that, right? And as we have already discussed that this column cannot be null. In case you have any doubts in primary key, please refer the previous video. The link is available in the description. A quick recap on the foreign key. We have also seen that these constraints allow us to have referential integrity between two tables in the database so that my tables does not have orphan records, right? All of this we have also seen in a dedicated video. So not explaining much time here, but you have to remember that we have a primary key that does not allow you to have duplicate records. And then you have foreign key, which allow you to enforce referential integrity between two tables, right? Now, what exactly is a unique key, right? When I say unique key, it simply means the unique key constraint. It is also a database constraint that ensure the uniqueness of values within one or more columns in a table, right? So this statement is important. If I have to specify something where I want one or more columns in the table to be unique, we use the unique key reference. Now, it is used to enforce the rule in specified columns, not one column, but a set of columns. Okay, that is important. When a unique key constraint is applied to a column or set of columns, the DBMS automatically check and enforce that the set of columns have unique value. Now, what does it mean? This means that no two rows in the table can have the same combination of values, right? Now you might be thinking, Mukesh, this is same as the primary key. The primary key also does the same, right? No two rows can have the same value. How this is different, right? So the idea is that the unique key also makes sure that two rows of data are not duplicate that can be done by the primary key also but here is something which is called the combination the combination of value should be unique right what does it mean we'll see slowly and gradually but as of now just 
understand this thing whenever i want to have a constraint where i want that no two rows in a table should have the same combination of values i use a unique key right now most of you might have got confused it with the primary key let's jump to the next slide which talks about primary key versus the unique key right the first thing what is the purpose a primary key uniquely identify each row in a table if i talk about unique key it enforce the uniqueness in one or more column right one or more column but does not necessarily serve as the primary identifier okay if i talk about nullability the primary key does not allow null right we have seen in the previous video that if we had a null column we were not able to convert that to a primary key however when i talk about the unique key it can have one null value right so if i apply unique key on two values one of the value can be null right it can be configured to disallow null values as well right so if you don't want that my unique key should not have null you can also configure that as well okay if i talk about the constraints one table can have only one primary key whereas when you talk about the unique key constraint your table can have multiple unique key constraints right so these are the primary differences guys between a primary key and a unique key okay the next difference is in indexing we have not explored it but just for the differentiation you need to remember that the primary key creates a clustered index whereas the unique key can create a clustered or a non clustered index okay the last bit is the foreign key relationship that is why we had a quick recap right whenever i am using a foreign key we use this primary key as a reference to the other table right when i talk about the unique key it can be used as a reference but less commonly used as compared to the primary key right two reason for that because you have more than one column which are unique key you can have null value you can have multiple unique identifiers right so that is why it is less commonly to be used as the foreign key whereas the primary key is most commonly used in while you join the two tables in a relationship right so these are the primary differences when it comes between primary versus unique key right you can take a screenshot of this and just save it for your reference as well okay now that you have understand what is the difference between these two tables let's quickly go to the sql server and execute all of this thing in action and see how does it work okay so now i am going to my sql server management studio okay so i am back in my sql server i'll just go and uh, connect my ssms and uh, yes i am connected okay so i'll go here and i select new query okay so we are working in our uipath database so i'll select that now first thing first how do you ensure and create a unique key right so i am going to copy paste a uh, syntax here and this is the table right create table employees i want to create a table which name is employee right employee id is the primary key right now if you see here first name last name is there but email id is a unique key now what actually this thing is going to do in this example i want to have a table where i do not want to have two employees with a same email id so employee id cannot be duplicate the email id also cannot be duplicate right so that's why you would see this keyword which is known as unique which is mentioned in front of this guy right so this is how you add the unique key reference in any of the column you just specify unique right you do not have to write unique key right here i have to write primary key but for unique you just use this keyword which is unique and let's go and execute this table my table is created okay now let's simply go and try to insert some records into this table okay so i'll just copy paste the other queries here like this okay so i am trying to insert into the employees table employee id first name last name and email right so if you see employee id is a primary key so 1 2 3 4 right in first name 
john jane mark and emily this is the last name and if you see all the email ids are different as well right and since we had the primary key as the unique all these folds are different so i can simply go and i say execute and total you would see that i have got four records so let's go here and see what data we have got in the tables okay just to validate and as you can see i have got four employees one two three four john jane and this all this right now if you remember i have added a primary key as well as a unique key also right and the email id is a unique key now watch closely if i try to insert a new employee okay my employee id is 5 1 2 3 4 5 the primary key no problem the new employee name is sara johnson but by mistake i put the same email id or i would say intentionally i'm trying to put the same email id as jane.do at the rate of example.com but if you see here for the second record i have the same email id if my table do not have a unique key constraint what would happen this record should actually go and insert into the table right that is what we have seen in the primary key right primary key only validated this field but now since you are email id column is also a unique key constraint if i try to execute this like here you get an error it says that violation of the unique key constraint cannot insert duplicate in this record because jane.do at the rate of example.com is already a part of your table right my primary key was satisfied but this guy was different right so let's try to correct this i'll put the correct id which is sara johnson at the rate of example.com now if i go and try to execute this you would see that the record is now available in the table right so i hope you understand what is the benefit of using the unique key the unique key helps you not to have the duplicate records or i would say combination of duplicate records in the same table coming back to the presentation so these are all the queries which i had executed so if you would see here this is the table right create table employees so to create a unique key you simply use this guy which is called unique keyword right and you can have multiple unique keywords in the table right now this is a normal insert statement we insert 1 2 3 4 right and this is how you insert right but when i tried to insert this guy which was john jane.do which was already available here i was getting an error right so in case you have a unique key constraint you cannot have two employee with the same email id in the table right so that is how this unique key constraint works okay now take an example i have already created a table okay my table is already created but i forgot to add the unique key constraint can i add it afterwards the answer is yes right so this is the syntax guys you have to simply use alter table table name add the constraint the same syntax add constraint what do you name the constraint right so i say that my constraint name is uc underscore email then you use this guy which is unique and you put the columns name here now what exactly is happening in this example in this example we are adding a unique key constraint the name of the constraint is uc underscore email right this is the name of the constraint we are adding it to the employees table and which is the column right so the column name is email so this is your column name email in case you want to add it to multiple columns just put a comma and keep adding the columns okay now once you add the unique key constraint to any column in the table the database system will verify whether you have duplicate records or not if any duplicates record are found the alter table will fail right so let's say you in your table you already have two duplicate email id and then you try to add a unique key constraint it will fail right this is the same thing we have seen in the primary key concept as well right the same concept is applicable here as well right now you need to also note that that uc underscore email the name is optional right you can provide any meaningful name if you provide a name the database will generate a system generated name by the constraint right if you see when i created the table i did not put a name so database automatically generated right but if you are 
putting any name here make sure that you put it in a way that you understand right do not put like a b c d or x y z right otherwise you will get an error that x y z failed you never know right either you can leave it as blank and let the database decide or you can just put it yourself but give a meaningful name okay now this is just a syntax right you need to make sure that you use your table name your column and the constraint name as per your requirement right by adding the unique constraint to the existing table i ensure that the specified column contains unique value preventing duplicate entries from being inserted or updated right so that is how you add unique constraint to the existing tables okay lastly what are the benefits which i get by using the unique key right if i am using a unique key constraint the first thing is i get the data integrity right by ensuring that the uniqueness of the value the constraint help you to maintain the data integrated and prevent duplicate data being inserted or updated query optimization when you have the data which is an integrated form your query is already being optimized so if you try to do a search operation it will be faster and you will get a improved performance the third one is the referential integrity as we have already mentioned that unique key can be used as a foreign key constraint in the related table it can be used most of the times you are going to stick with the primary key and using it as the foreign key constraint but in case you don't have you can use this guy as well right to establish relationship between multiple tables it is important to note that the unique key constraint allow for the presence of null values now null values are considered distinct and do not violate the uniqueness requirement however within the set of not null values each value must be unique right so remember the difference which we talk about primary versus unique key whenever using the unique key make sure you understand the difference and make sure that the column combination is unique okay so let's quickly summarize today we have seen a new constraint which is called a unique key constraint which enforces the uniqueness on one or more column and it can serve as a primary identifier we have also seen that the unique key can allow null value in one table you can have a single primary key but you can have multiple unique key as well whenever we use a unique key it creates a clustered or a non clustered index and lastly it can be used in a reference key in related tables right and there is a huge difference between primary key and the unique key so don't get confused right so i hope you are now clear with the concept of unique key and you are able to follow along with this tutorial so with this i would like to wrap this video here thank you for watching if you have any more questions any more doubts you can drop me in the comments or you can write me in an email as well right having said that i would like to wrap this video here thank you for watching if you like this video please do subscribe to the channel and happy automation